I'm Porter Flea, and I'm an atmospheric technician late for his first shift at the station. But instead of holding a piece of bread in my mouth as I'm running late to work, I'm holding inside the fact that I'm really a changeling. Sort of like John Carpenter's The Thing, but less Cronenberg and more interested in trivial goals like hugging eight strangers and killing one specific person. I've always treated traitor objectives as loose suggestions and instead prefer the subtler details of being around antagonists such as the permission to griff anyone and everyone. Unfortunately, the potential for me to bomb the space station is hindered by the fact that I have a co-worker who glows more than the CIA employees Terry Davis used to educate the internet about. Disregarding my co-worker's inability to finish words, I set off to try to set up a bomb-making workshop, which consists mostly of just moving lockers around and ignoring ambulance-chasing lawyers with names like Slim Dip Jim. I don't need another microdick with questionable ethics in my life, so I went to work setting up my pyromaniacal plan. Unfortunately, my glowy coworker Sneed X is one of those nosy types who pretends to be helpful and decided to do my work making tritium for me instead. I realized at this point my elaborate scheme of committing canister-based arson wasn't going to work out so smoothly with this guy around, so I just might as well fall back on the most tried and true technician trader method available which is just flood every room with flammable plasma and set them on fire like they're eucalyptus trees in Australia during drought season. The two most important parts of being an effective arsonist is you gotta drain the air supply pipes first and you gotta have a spacesuit on because you don't want to eat where you shit because eating shit is what the normal players do when you roll antagonist. I do a bunch of pipe work mumbo jumbo and get the system set up and then realize the atmosphere exosuit is gone. That's fine because I can steal the engineer's exosuit and snag the third and most important critical ingredient. The welders. While I begin my plan to destroy everyone else's good time, some Zoomer assistant geniuses decide to bring everyone's attention to the fact that the chef is tainting her meat supply more creatively than IKEA Swedish meatball suppliers. Well, truthfully, I was on the fence about exercising my privilege to ruin the game for others. Having some double digit IQ assistant talk smack about my department was the last straw and it was now time to make the chef the least of their problems, beginning with the super matter reactors area, while the assistants went on to accuse the station AI of being malfunctional. I flee the scene of the crime because getting caught is for suckers, and soon I'm outside in space floating more freely than a Mormon who just renounced the use of his special underwear. I re-enter the other side and look for a good place to start another fire. I didn't really have too many ideas to be honest, and nobody else was aware of the problem ensuing in the engineering department, so I just ended up setting a fire in the central hallway below the brig, because fuck the space popos. And I then headed back to the dorms to buy some Zippos from a vending machine. In addition to looking cool, Zippos do not self-extinguish, making them very nice arsonist tools and also a very natural thing for the company store to sell on a space station without fire escapes. The assistant Scooby-Doo mystery machine, meanwhile, continued to narrow down their list of round suspects to the same AI and chef they were yammering about for the last 10 minutes when they realized there was a plasma fire. I knew my hunch that the ASL atmospheric technician co-worker would be a snitch was right because he immediately started casting suspicions on our entire department to the rest of the station. I circled back to engineering to inspect the results of my crime and realized that the area directly around the supermatter core was filled with flammable gas that just needed a little inspiration like most teenagers during lockdown waiting to go get free stuff from the neighborhood Target. So I decided to head back into engineering while Sneed X continued to cast suspicions on me publicly. I wasn't about to snitch on myself over the radio frequency the space cops monitored, so I played it smooth. I decided at that point action spoke louder than words to people who don't even type words properly to begin with, so I slid past the Hanna-Barbera Zoomer assistant patrol trying to uncover the magical plasma fire mystery unfolding in engineering while arguing with the station AI. The jig was soon about to be up thanks to Sneed and Raymond Dugmore, and I had to move fast. I walked through the burnt out remains of my first fire and ended up spraying the fire without even trying, like I was an asymptomatic virus carrier. At that point, I needed to get out before my past literally caught up to me, so I escaped the old familiar way, as the only competent person on the station used really big letters to drive his point home that he knew what was going on, but also wasn't sweating it. While the head of personnel continued sleuthing and Sneed continued snitching, I made my escape. It was now time to share my burning passions with any newcomers in the arrivals wing and I did it in style with a Zippo while the assistant crime squad started being problematic by assuming the Ned Flanders law said station AI's gender. I decided to hit the station where it hurt, in the medical department's freezer. I ran back into the maintenance corridors and proceeded to get lost in unfamiliar territory. I panicked into a paramedic who tased me and then zip-tied my hands. Oh well, can't win forever. 
but it was at that point when he started speaking in tons that I realized there was a cult hiding in the station maintenance corridors the whole time. He took me to their hidden lair and was a good enough sport that they converted me to their blood cult rather than offer me as a changeling sacrifice to their god. I decided it was time to spread the good news to the rest of the station and that hiding out in space was for heathen suckers. And if I could help them get some guy named Jimmy they needed to summon our god, then that's cool too. Some of the other cultists didn't think that was a good idea. But at that point, I wasn't really paying attention. Because, after all, I'm a changeling. I'm meant to shine, and that's the cult's own problem if they can't keep up. So after carving a few sick tattoos into my own arm and watching them baptize new sheeple into their ranks, I headed out to do my holy pilgrimage. At this point, we all had pentagram halo floating above our heads so the time for hiding was over. While the cultist paramedic fulfilled his devil Hippocratic oath by recovering the body of a downed cultist, I continued down the hall to do my good deeds and made a lizard man run away before I decided I didn't need my exosuit anymore. I was now outside the bar, where the Zoomer assistants were still besieging the chef trying to lynch her for the crime of serving humanly raised hamburger at the beginning of our shift. When they saw the pentagram above my head and my arm churn into a blade, Zoomers knew they done fucked up. My fighting style is not very robust, to be honest, so my first victim was a wooden table. I got another good hit in before the rest of the Zoom Zooms from outside got in and started abusing me in a very unfair fight. Soon I was down and getting dogpiled as though I was running around with a sword in downtown Houston during 20 2020 trying to save somebody else's bar or something stupid like that. But I had one last trick up my sleeve, which is the ability of changelings to come back from the dead. The Zoomers were dimly aware that I could come back from the dead, so they decided the solution was to burn me. Probably because they watched the thing one time. However, in true assistant fashion, they only succeeded in setting themselves on fire. The chef, meanwhile, confirmed that, in fact, she was a traitor because she caught Ilioth in the chest with a hook on a chain and pulled her into the kitchen like a goddamn mothman fish. The chef proceeded to kill Ilioth while Duncan bled out in the bar during the confusion, so the end result of a battle between seven Zoomers and two traitors ended up being two Zoomers dead and one traitor temporarily down. At this point, I revived into a headless boxer shorts wearing Cronenberg and proceeded to exact revenge. Unfortunately, my bare feet were no match for broken glass, and Gregory Hooker did a very uncool thing and pushed me into a fire. Unfortunately for him, being Captain Save a Bro only resulted in him being locked in a room, on fire, with a headless changeling. He was soon dead, but I was still stuck in the fire. Stop, drop, and roll revealed itself to be a government propaganda, but it turns out fire extinguishers work well. However, the bigger problem now is that there was no longer any oxygen in the room, and I passed out for some more sleepy changeling hibernation. I revived to see my plasma handiwork was paying off some nice dividends in the bar, but I still didn't have a clear escape path out of the room I died in. However, it was at that point I realized that I could teleport using my cultist blood magic, so I got out safely. My cultist brethren were of no help to me in the bar, but they seemed to know what they were doing. I grew back my head and prepared for some blood magic spells. Unfortunately, somebody didn't realize that you can't play with magic in a room filled with natural gas, and our cultist hideout got exploded. I was surrounded by a bigger hellscape than Yuma, Arizona, with no end in sight, and I passed out yet again with a familiar burning sensation like a college kid who attended too many fratty parties. I teleported myself out of there when I revived and proceeded to spread my burning love to my cultist brother by catching him on fire. When a medical cyborg showed up and started hassling me, I used a blood magic EMP spell to stun the Borg, but unfortunately fists do not beat metal in the game of fist metal EMP. Also, for some reason, I kept spontaneously combusting. The Borg ran away, but broken glass, the true weakness of the barefooted, stopped my pursuit. The Borg continued to put pressure on our hideout while I once again went into changeling stasis. My friend Larry managed to drag me away from the scene into a maintenance corridor somewhere and it was at this point that our blood cult succeeded in summoning our eldritch horror god, which at that point transformed me into a reaper. I bullied the Borg some more, but let it go when it ran into the fire that plagued me throughout the game. In the end, I didn't successfully hunt down any survivors before the round ended, but that's fine. In the end, I'd say I succeeded my goal of spreading chaos, and that's truly all that matters. Given that there were changelings, a malfunctioning AI, and a blood cult on the station at the same time, I'd say this match was bogged from the start for the game's protagonists, but it's fine for me because I wasn't one of them at the time.